Good afternoon, professors and colleagues. Today in this physics colloquium, I will present to you a part of my MS research work entitled Optimization of the Selection Filter for Proton Computed Tomography. This is under the advisory of Dr. Catherine Therese Quinones. Now to start with, let us first talk about cancer statistics. According to World Health Organization, cancer ranks as the second leading cause of death worldwide, accounting for an estimated 9.6 million deaths in 2018. In the Philippines, cancer incidence rockets at 189 out of 100,000 Filipinos, where four of which dies every hour, or a total of 96 cancer patients every day. Cancer burden continues to grow globally, thus the need of an effective treatment option to control the growth or even kill cancer cells. The following are the common cancer treatment options but not limited to first, surgery in which the patient undergoes operation to take out the tumor, second, chemotherapy with the use of drugs to be injected to the bloodstream, and lastly, by radiation therapy or radiotherapy by the use of radiation beams to non-invasively kill cancer cells. When utilizing radiation for cancer treatment, what we do want is to directly eradicate tumor and other microscopic diseases while we want to avoid overdosing the normal organs or tissues which may lead to severe side effects. By radiation beams, we can have different radiation sources, photon beams and particle beams. So shown in this figure is the depth dose profile of the different radiation sources traversing inside a 200 millimeter water box, where the x-axis shows the depth of the target material and the y-axis shows the dose deposited at a certain depth. So first we start with the photon beams. So as you can see, the green curve, there is a higher dose deposition at the entrance location than an exponential decrease as the depth increases. So if the two more is located around here, for example, at around 145 millimeter, the skin region, which is not part of the tumor, receives the higher dose, which may cause damage to the tissues or skin cells. Now, to address this limitation, the use of particle beams is considered. So we have first the carbon-12 ion, the block curve. So conversely, with photons, it has low entrance dose, then a sudden peak at a certain location, which is known as the Bragg peak, then a distal fall off, and at a decreased dose deposition after the tumor location. This is favorable for the patient since the tumor receives the higher dose. However, there is a tail end dose after the tumor location, which may be unfavorable for the organs not part of the tumor. This limitation can be addressed by proton beams. So with protons, we can have a superior advantage, which is merited to the reverse depth dose profile of protons compared to photons, again, the green curve. So this leads to significantly low entrance dose, which allows normal tissues before the tumor location to be spared and maximum dose deposition at the tumor location due to the existence of Bragg peak with protons. Further, no exit dose is possible with proton therapy since protons can be stopped at a precise depth. This allows global increase of proton therapy facilities and more and more cancer patients successfully treated. However, before a treatment is planned, the patient should undergo medical imaging for dose calculation and tumor site verification. Currently, this is clinically done using an X-ray computed tomography or an X-ray CT scanner to produce a map of the X-ray absorption coefficients in terms of CT Hounsfield units, which is then converted to proton stopping power, which is the basic input for proton radiotherapy. However, the theoretical formulation is not simple and poses the following uncertainties. First, those uncertainty due to a mismatch of the conversion of HG values to proton-stopping power values and inaccurate positioning of the Bragg peak 
which causes proton range uncertainties, which greatly affects the accuracy of the proton therapy treatment. These uncertainties, the use of protons instead of photon beams in imaging is considered a proton computed tomography. With this, we can have a single machine for both imaging and treatment, and owing to the low entrance dose of protons, Proton CT offers low imaging dose, which is highly favorable for the patient. Further, due to the unique characteristic of protons as they interact with matter, a single scan can exploit several measurements, leading to three imaging modalities of proton CT, hence a more comprehensive diagnosis. And most importantly, a direct reconstruction of proton-stopping power maps, which is highly advantageous to one of the imaging modalities, the energy loss proton CT. This advantage can be validated by a study of Arbor and his colleagues in 2015, wherein the same target phantom, the GAMEX-467 phantom, is incident to both proton and photon beams. So shown in figure 4 are the calibration curves from CT images and proton CT images to the standard RSP values. So as you can see, for the left and the middle graph, so this is from CT images, and then the rightmost graph, this is from proton CT images. So as observed, there is a calibration equation used to correlate HU values from CT images to the standard RSP values. For the leftmost graph, they used a linearly interpolated function, and for the, the middle graph, they used two linear function. However, with the proton CT images, there is a direct reconstruction of the RSP values, hence the absence of the calibration procedure. So the absence of the calibration procedure not only make the treatment procedure faster, but also increases the accuracy of the treatment plan. Now to trace back the development of proton CT over time, let us look briefly into its historical overview. Proton CT was first proposed by Cormac in 1963, wherein initial experiments shows several advantages over photons. Coiler then in 1968 showed the first example of using energetic protons in imaging and later concluded that higher image contrast is obtained with protons compared with photons. However, early research nearly stopped due to the following constraints. First, the density and spatial resolution constraint due to the occurrence of multiple co column scattering with protons and economical limitation due to high cost in building particle accelerators. However, the interest to proton CT was later revived due to increasing proton therapy facilities, thus in need for more accurate proton stopping power calculation. Now, to take these constraints into account, a better understanding on the physical interaction of protons traversing inside a medium is necessary. Now, proton interacts with matters in two ways, with the atomic electrons or with the atomic nuclei. Now, when protons interact with the atomic electrons of the target material, it undergoes multiple column scattering which causes small angle deflection of the proton's path and at the same time losing minimal amount of its energy. So the rate of energy loss, or the stopping power S, is best described by Beth Block equation shown in equation 1, wherein it is highly dependent on the type of radiation source, which is the, represented by Z in the equation, the incident energy, which is directly proportional to beta, and to the density of the target material denoted by rho. Further, when protons are incident to the atomic nuclei of the target material, the interaction can be elastic or inelastic. When protons undergo elastic nuclear interaction, the energy is conserved since it is elastic. However, 
owing to the large mass of the target nucleus compared to the incident protons, the protons are deflected at larger angles. On the other hand, if the protons undergo inelastic nuclear interaction, the energy is not conserved, causing large energy loss to protons and often stop inside and not exiting matter, causing attenuation or reduced flowence of the outgoing primary protons and possible production of secondary particles. As a summary, the outgoing protons are mainly composed of the unattenuated outgoing primary protons and the by-produced secondary particles, where these secondary particles are deemed unnecessary for the reconstruction. Now we focus our attention to the outgoing primaries, where we can have attenuation measurements, hence attenuation proton CT. Now, these outgoing primaries exit matter after experiencing energy loss, hence energy loss proton CT, small angle scattering, hence scattering proton CT, and after elastic nuclear interactions. This gives us the three imaging modalities of proton CT. Now, to discuss the three imaging modalities in detail, so we start first with energy loss proton CT. In exploiting energy loss measurements, we start off with the rate of energy loss by beth block equation given by equation 2, where it is highly dependent on the proton path and the energy. Now rearranging the equation, dividing both sides with the stopping power of protons in water for simplicity's sake, then integrating both sides, we have equation 3, which is the imaging equation for energy loss proton CT, where the right-hand side of the equation is the relative stopping power, or the RSP, integrated along the proton path gamma. And the left-hand side of the equation are the projection values for this imaging modality, the energy loss water equivalent path length, or energy loss Whipple. However, not all outgoing protons satisfies the equation. What only satisfies are only those protons that undergo energy loss. Now let us examine if which of the following interaction did the protons undergo losing of energy. So as discussed, when proton suffers from multiple column scattering, it also undergoes energy loss. However, Protons do not, after experiencing elastic nuclear interaction, since the energy is conserved. Hence, for energy loss proton CT, we only need primary protons that undergo multiple column scattering. Second, in considering attenuation of these primary protons, we base our calculation using the Beer-Lambert's law expressed by equation 4 where kappa is the inelastic nuclear cross-section, x as the penetration depth, and phi in and phi out are the entrance and exit proton flowence, respectively. Now, rearranging the equation gives us equation 5, which is the imaging equation for this imaging modality, wherein the negative logarithmic of the ratio of the exit and entrance flowence are the projection values for this modality. Now, to satisfy this equation, we only consider those primary protons that successfully exit matter, leaving all secondaries be filtered out. Hence, we only need primary protons that undergo multiple ca column scattering and elastic nuclear interaction. Lastly, when we measure the degree of small angle scattering of protons, we consider first the, form the formulation of Gatschak of the scattering power of protons T given by equation 6, where A is the variance of the angular distribution and T is highly dependent on energy. Now we introduce tau as the scattering power which is instead dependent on the variance A given by equation 7. Now rearranging the equation, dividing both sides by the scattering power of protons in water, and then integrating, 
we have equation 8 as the imaging equation for scattering proton CT, where the left-hand side of the equation is the relative scattering power delta integrated along the pro proton path gamma, and the left-hand side of the equation are the projection values, the scattering ripple of this imaging modality. However, what only satisfies this equation are those primary protons that undergo small angle scattering, hence those with multiple column scattering. Now shown in this slide is a conceptual design of a proton computed tomography system comprising of a source, an entrance detector located before the target phantom to record the proton's initial energy, position, and direction. Then the target phantom, and lastly, the exit detector to record the proton's exit energy, position, direction, and interaction. Although Proton City offers several advantages, data selection limits its full clinical application. However, this can be addressed with the application of selection filters or cuts, which leads us to the objective of the study, that is, to employ and optimize the selection filters in each imaging modality. This study is purely computational in nature, and the simulation environment is as shown. So we have an incident proton located 10 cm away from the target phantom, of 1 million incident protons, then a nuclear actor is attached to the vacuum world to track the nuclear interactions of the protons and is synced to the exit detector placed 10 cm away from the phantom, which records the proton's exit energy, direction, and nuclear interactions. The data analysis is carried out using CERN root software that includes extracting the energy and angular distribution and the employment of CUT to either or both of these distributions. Also, the following criteria are set in each imaging modality to assess the accuracy of the data selection. For energy loss proton CT, the mean of the energy distribution. For attenuation proton CT, the count of the outgoing protons. And for scattering proton CT, the variance of the angular distribution, since these quantities are the inputs for the calculation of the projection values in its imaging modality, to be discussed on the latter slides. And lastly, the percentage difference is calculated. After carrying out the methods presented, we obtained the following results. First, upon comparing the exit energy distributions of 200 mega electron volt and 300 MeV incident energies, we observe that more energy loss is associated with 200 MeV compared to 300 MeV. So this can be supported by the inverse dependence of the rate of energy loss d over dx to the speed of the particle, which is directly proportional to the particle's energy. Second, by investigating the exit angular distribution, we found out that there is greater scattering angle with 200 MeV, as you can see, compared to the 300 mega electron volt energy. Hence, we can see that greater energy loss and greater scattering angle are associated with lower energy. Also, theory-wise, indeed, the presence of large angle scattering, the red curve, for both distribution are caused by the primaries that undergo elastic nuclear interaction. And those with small angle scattering, the blue curve, are caused by primaries without nuclear interaction or with multiple column scattering. To investigate the energy and angular distribution behaviors simultaneously, shown in this slide is the biplot of these distributions. So the energy against the angle. So x for the scattering angle and y-axis for the energy. 
So as shown with the color variation, blue for fewer events to yellow uh, to or means numerous tracks, we can say that most of the outgoing protons are composed of primaries without nuclear interaction or with multiple column scattering, while fewer events, lighter blue, are for part primaries with elastic nuclear interaction and the production of secondaries. Also, small angle scattering, this one, is depicted with primaries with multiple column scattering. And, however, large angle scattering for the secondaries and primaries with elastic nuclear interaction are observed. Now, after investigating the behavior of this distribution, we proceed to the employment and optimization of the selection filters. We start with the energy loss proton CT. Now, out from this distribution detected by the exit detector, what only conforms our reconstruction model are those protons that undergo multiple column scattering presented by this distribution. However, primaries after nuclear interaction which causes large energy loss and large angle scattering are still detected, as you can see. The presence of these unwanted protons shift the mean exit energy of protons and consequently affects the accuracy of the reconstructed RSP values. Now to overcome this, we employ selection filters to either or both energy and angular distributions and investigate the mean of the energy distribution such that it closely matches the mean of the reconstruction model. Since this value is the input for the E out of equation 3, which calculates the projection value for energy loss proton CT. Now, after the employment of one-dimensional and two-dimensional cuts from two sigma to three sigma, the following results are obtained. So shown in this plot is a percentage difference generated after the application of this certain sigma cut. So note that the data points located above the zero mark line or the red dash line indicates that the mean is overestimated and those that are located below would mean that the mean of the energy distribution is underestimated. Further, the closer the data is to the zero mark line, the more accurate is the data obtained. This is true for all plots to be presented on the later slides. Indeed, the mean value is shifted from here, without cut or the raw distribution, it is farther away from the zero mark line with greater percentage difference. However, after the application of this following cut, the 2.5 cut on energy distribution and two sigma cut on angular, and a combination of two sigma cut on energy and 2.5 sigma cut on angular, the accuracy is further improved by approximately 96 percent. So due to time constraints, uh, the result shown is only for 200 MeV. However, the study is done for 300 MeV and for a heterogeneous uh, phantom. Now moving on to attenuation proton CT, from this distribution detected by the exit detector, only these outgoing protons should be considered in the reconstruction. Since in practice, all outgoing particles are counted by the detector with no way of telling if it is primary or secondary particle. Hence, we should carefully choose the selection filter that removes a lot of the secondaries and minimal on the primaries to avoid data inaccuracy. Now, to do this, we investigate the count of the outgoing protons after the employment of cut such that this value closely matches the real number of the outgoing primary protons. Since this value, the count of outgoing protons is the phi out of the calculation of the projection values for this imaging modality, wherein phi in is already known to be the incoming flux of protons. Now, as shown, we only want the red and then the black curve. 
leaving all the secondaries be filtered out, the black and then the cyan curve. Now, due to large angle scattering of protons, their red curve, it is inefficient to cut on the angular distribution since significant cracks of secondaries, the cyan and the black curve, will also be included. However, application of cuts on energy distribution tells us otherwise. Now, since most of the secondary particles, the, again, the black and then the cyan curve, possess lower energies compared to the exiting primary protons, the red and then the blue curve, the plots for primaries with and without nuclear interaction overlaps. Hence, it is effective to filter out secondaries on the energy distribution. To validate this assumption, let us take this as an example. Say for 1 million protons with incident proton energy 200 mega electron volt traversing inside a 200 millimeter homogeneous water phantom, only about 840,000 protons exit the phantom, which is composed of almost 810,000 primary protons and approximately 30,000 secondaries. After application of 10 sigma cut on either or both energy and angular distribution, the following data are obtained. So we can see that the energy cut, this one, encloses the number of protons that closely matches the real count, which is this one, of the primary protons, only removing 2% of the primaries and significant tracks of secondaries of about 75%. Now, collectively, after varying the sigma cuts from 2 sigma to 10 sigma, 10 sigma cut on energy distribution yields the lowest percentage difference with improved accuracy of 77% compared to the raw distribution, this one. Now, lastly, in exploiting the degree of small angle scattering of protons, now, we only wish to include the primary protons that undergo multiple column scattering. Since it is not yet possible to track each proton's interaction in clinical scenario, for this modality, we investigate the variance of the exit angular distribution since this value is the input for A out in the calculation of the projection values for scattering proton CT shown by equation 8. Now, investigating, we only want the blue curve, the primaries that undergo multiple column scattering or without nuclear interaction. It is more efficient to employ cut on the angular distribution since with energy, the distribution of the primaries with and without nuclear interaction overlaps. To verify this assumption, again, let us look into the data presented. Again, the closer the data point to the zero line means lower percentage difference, hence more accurate data selection. Indeed, after 2.5 sigma cut on angular distribution, the accuracy is further improved by approximately 99.8%, which is highly significant. Now we can draw even more solid conclusion if we try different target quantums. With the following results presented, this study concludes the following. First, upon investigation of the behavior of the energy and angular distribution, we found an inverse dependence of the incident energy to both rate of energy loss and degree of scattering angle. And noted that most of the prevalent interaction is caused by multiple column scattering and lesser events for the remaining interaction. Moreover, after thorough investigation, the following criteria are set and applied in each imaging modality to assess the accuracy of the data selection. Again, for energy loss proton CT, this mean of energy distribution for attenuation outgoing protons, and for scattering proton CT, the angular variance. Since these quantities are the basic inputs for the calculation of the projection values derived for each imaging modality. Further, 
given this simulation setup, uh, homogeneous water phantom with incident energy 200 mega electron volt, the following are the optimal cuts. For energy loss, proton CT, 2.5 sigma cation angle and 2 sigma cation energy, and a combination of 2 sigma cation angle and 2.5 sigma cation energy provides the lowest uh, percentage difference. For attenuation proton CT, 10 sigma cat on energy distribution is the optimal cut. And lastly, for scattering proton CT, 2.5 sigma cat on angular distribution. However, in clinical nature, proton therapy is rendered to a human body of inhomogeneous tissues of varying densities and irregularities. Hence, the study further recommends the use of target phantoms of large tissue distribution to verify the performance of the obtained optimal cuts and reconstruct the output images to establish relationship between the data selection filter and the accuracy of the images. Wherein this recommendation should be the last part of my MS study. However, due to the unfortunate event currently happening, this work was not realized since this part of the study has high computational requirement, hence the need of access to computers at school. Nevertheless, uh, this research work successfully obtained substantial result and the author wishes to acknowledge the following. And that would be all and thank you for listening. Thank you very much for that presentation, Grandma. I think Grandma should be with us. Uh, so if you have questions, feel free to uh, chat them, put them, write them in the chat box, or you may also ask to be acknowledged and you can speak through your microphone. So let me see. Um, for now, I think people are still formulating their questions. So I'll give you some time. Maybe I'll ask the first question. Grandma, is that is that all right? Ask one see Grandma. Oh, now there's Verney, Verney. Um, the question is, uh, in all of your studies, have you considered uh, sh the shell and energy corrections in the Beth block formula? Unfortunately, uh, grandma's connection seems to be unstable. Okay, another question. Uh, let me just read the question. Uh, you mentioned that the simulations require high computational power. I'm curious what machine did you use for the simulation of 1 million protons and can this be possibly done using a laptop? This is from uh, Mom Merge. Uh, Grandma sent a message that the internet uh, is slow on her side. So maybe one possible thing that we can do is to chat to her our questions or to the chat box and we'll send it to her. And possibly she can reply through, uh, through chat. Okay. So let's see. If you can send your question to grandma and she can... Uh, reply, we'll just read her reply. I, good afternoon again. Sorry, sir. Hi, Graham. For mom merge, question. You, uh, I've mentioned that the simulation require high computational power. And what machine did I use to simulate 1 million protons? Can this be done using a laptop? For one projection at one degree, uh, I used my laptop for simulating one million incident protons. However, when we now go to a PCT system, a proton CT system, the projection should be 360 degrees scan. So a laptop would not do the job since the simulation would take a week or so and longer. 
So a desktop computer would be ideal. Thank um, you, for girl. yes, sir. For Dr. Barra from Dr. Barra, uh, I mentioned that I used incident energy with values 200, 300, and 400. However, I just used 200 and 300. What are the what is or are the reasons why these values were chosen? For the first question, we, I and my advisor chose this um, incident energies for 200 MEV since that is the energy required for the Bragg Peak to be located outside the head um, dimension, so the skull dimension. Then for 300 MEV, that is for energy for the Bragg Peak to be outside the body on the torso dimension. And next, what will happen if the energy values are less than 200 or greater than 400? So if it is less than 200, actually the incident energy is dependent on where or the dimension of the target phantom. So for human application, so the dimension of the human part, for example, torso, uh, head, should be considered such that for imaging, kailangan yung brag peak, yung sudden peak, wala dun sa katawan. Since if that happens, you know, doing treatment, not imaging. I hope that answers the question. There's a question by Verney actually. Oh. Uh, in your studies, have you considered the shell and energy corrections in the Beth block formula? Oh. For this um, study, I did not go further on, since as you have seen, uh, hindi ako nakaabot dun sa calculation ng RSP values since kulang sa time. So, mm -hmm. for that, I cannot uh, answer that correctly. So, for actually, for energies, for higher than, I'm, I'm not just sure. However, shell correction and density correction can be neglected uh, if the energies are higher or lower than so, uh, Nye range, Kibali, for shell correction to be included and density correction to be included. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers, server. Uh, okay. Are there other questions? I also written some questions. Let's see if we have time. Uh, yes, sir. Na answer na ba lahat ng questions? Uh, from... Mr. Pido. Okay, Kelvin. Ah, yes, sir. How many detectors are there in your PCT system for particle tracking? So, in my study, uh, supposedly I will have a PCT system. However, again, due to time constraint and the pandemic, I did not um, really try the PCT system. I just only use the gate. So actually, there are two detectors, the entrance and then the exit detector. Uh, okay. Uh, another question from Alvan. Did you measure the residual energies of the individual protons? Uh, so for this, um, yes, it is important to measure the residual energies of the individual protons. However, for an image to be rendered, a pixel would um, entail a average uh, mean of the distribution. So, uh, yung ginawa ko na lang is the mean, not the individual energy. Residual um, energy. Okay. There's another question from some guy here. You mentioned in the last part about the accuracy of the images. If you were given the chance to continue your research, what method are you go going to use for the calculation of the accuracy of the images? Is it possible to improve the proton dose calculation accuracy? Uh, thank you, Mr. Fajardo, for the question. So for that, um, for on simulating the PCT system, 360 degrees, my advisor uh, 
ha, with together with her advisor uh, inter, uh, abroad a uh, formula or make a uh, program for that however i did not have the time na i teach niya about that so i'm not really sure about the mechan- the procedure in rendering the image however yes proton dose calculation must be uh, improved mm-hmm. okay um we can still entertain so we'll have probably five minutes more for questions if you still have questions okay let me ask uh did you use your your vacuum is it the the two meter by two meter by two meter is that the vacuum you used in your setup or is it just an example Yes, sir. I've used the two meter by two meter by two meter vacuum drum using would the. It, would it be possible to use something different? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, in reality, that should be composed of air since the treatment or the imaging uh, room is not vacuum but is composed by air. So, must uh, uh, realistic okay. by air. Uh, How however, about the size? Uh, the size is two meter to accommodate the size of the phantom to oh, okay, allow. Okay. Uh, um, but you also are trying to use something that would mimic air in your simulation. Uh, unfortunately, no, sir. Since the study is just uh, is in its preliminary, so for. Uh-huh. Uh, for simplicity for process, I think. And then in some something that you missed because of the pandemic, using heterogeneous uh, phantom, you want to verify I, your sigma cuts, right? Using I, heterogeneous phantom. Actually, I've tried a heterogeneous phantom, but a simple one. A heterogeneous lab of water, bone water. However, uh-huh, I should yeah. use a Gamex 467 phantoms wherein there is tissue inhomogeneity. And you got the same sigma cuts. I unfortunately I did not go. I did not uh, do that experiment since. Ah, okay. I see. But what would you expect? Is it the same sigma cuts or? Uh, uh, expectedly no, sir. Since no. the okay. yeah, sir, the materials sure. are. Yeah. And actually, I want to ask: What are these sigma cuts? What are the implications of having? one or another oh, sigma cuts mean the mean plus or minus sigma times the mean so we just take the minimum and then the maximum and then the area that encloses the maximum and the minimum and then that would be the basis for the sigma cut as uh, the filtered particles then we get get the mean and the other quantity okay Thank you, Graham. Uh, are there other questions? I hope I did not miss any anybody in the chat box. Okay, so I think that's that's all. Uh, let me share my screen. I will be, will be presenting a certificate of appreciation. Let me read the citation. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Okay. Uh, Midona State University, College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, Department of Physics, awards this certificate of appreciation to Professor Grandma Fe I. Penyonal in sincere acknowledgement of her exemplary service as research colloquium speaker on optimization of the selection filter for proton computed tomography held online on November 13, 2020 from 3 to 4 p.m. via Google Meet. Signed uh, myself, um, I'm Kaironisa Pada, and Sir Henry Aringa, our department chairperson and dean of the CNSM, respectively. Okay, thank you very much, Graham.
You're welcome, sir. Okay, so I think that uh, ends our session for today. Um, for those who have attended, there will be a an evaluation link. I think it should be available in the group chat. Right, right now, it is already available. So you can uh, fill up this link to be able to get a certificate of participation for this colloquium. And there should be more colloquiums, research colloquiums soon. We'll send out announcements. Um, I think uh, that's all.